So Lana, you're going to be teaching us this evening how we can all sort out our social media. So uh, please everyone, can we put our hands together for Lara, who's going to be teaching us how to do social media organizing. Over to you, Lara, and I'm going to make you host. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yay. Okie dokies. So here we are. And um, I just need to point out that that this presentation has been done in some of my my paint box spring colours, not quite all because I want you to read the, the stuff. But um, I just thought I'd drop that in now that I understand this colour system. So we're going to have a look tonight at organising your social media. And we're going to focus on social media tools, social media content, social media audit and declutter, your workflow, your social media content calendar and batching. So that's what we're going to try and cover. And I wanted to have a look to actually look at what do we mean by social media tools? Because we all go into this. Oh, I'm using Canva. Oh, I'm using this. Oh, I'm using that. And that is half of the the social media tools thing. So there's tools, but there's also the, the kind of reasons why you're using those tools. And if you think about, there are three kinds of platforms. One is listening platform. So these are the ways in which you are creating content or you are recycling content or you are sharing other people's content out to places so that other people can look at them, listen to them and become engaged with them. And some of the kind of more well-known um, tools, social media tools for those listening platforms are things like your schedulers. Hootsuite is um, is a particular one. There are, honestly, when I went and had a look at all this, there are so many now. There are the top 25, there are the top 50, there are the top 75, there's the top 10 for 2021, which is different from the top 20 of 2020. So, Already you get into this huge overwhelm as to, OK, there's all these tools, what do I use? And you are probably already using lots of tools, at least 20 or 30, although there will be at least five that you use probably on a daily basis. There are publishing platforms. And so these are where you can actually publish your content on it and it will disperse it out. So, for example, Lara's using Libsyn, which is her platform to enable her podcast to get out to all the other platforms. They're enabling people to listen from a whole range of different apps. Some will be through Apple iTunes, some will be through, um, there's one on my phone, which name escapes me, there's Podbean. Again, there's this whole range of stuff. And the top three really around these publishing flat platforms are Content Cal, Buffer and Sprout Social. Um, and again you you have so many it's often really difficult to know what do I want and what do I want it and how am I going to use it and will I use it and we'll go into that in a little while and then the last type of platform there is is what they call competitor analysis platforms and Kathy will be familiar with this this is Google AdWords key planner WooRank rank and rank math that you've seen in your blog posts and stuff social pilots and these actually start analyzing how effective the content that you have posted out is in terms of get it getting to your customers and informing people that you are there and of your brand so why is everybody rushing to do social media and the reason why it is much faster to become visible quickly across a very wide audience than the far, than the traditional business we all know and we all value that relationship so we spend our time building and nurturing and it takes time to get somebody 
through, if you like, that wooing process to the point at which they're ready to convert from a very interested um, lead into an actual purchasing customer or client. And social media, just as you know, will help you do that super quickly. And if you can capitalize on the right message and the consistency, which is exactly what Kathy was talking about last week, making sure everything matches up, you have a higher chance of attracting new clients and also keeping your existing customers and clients happy and connected and engaged with you. So you already know, because I can imagine, I know for, you know, with, with Cheryl, there are, I know at least 10 tools that Cheryl uses. Lara, I know at least 10. And Kathy, I know at least three or four that you're using. Um, and how you came to make choices around those will be an interesting to dis uh, interesting discussion to have because there will be some commonalities around some of the tools that you're using and there will be some differences because you're also very unique with your businesses. So the tools really as a general are really to help you get visible, increase your ability to capture people and get them to customers, to become customers. Three examples that you probably know um, very well. We're all using, I believe, Canva. So you know that Canva creates flyers, ebooks, business cards, images. If you have the pro version, it also is connected to smart mock-ups. So you can create your business cards, click one click to print, and it goes off and it gets printed and gets delivered to your door. You can do it with mugs and items and all that kind of thing. And the thing with Canva is it has its own scheduling system within it. So you can literally create all your Instagram posts, Facebook posts, whatever posts they are, use the Canva scheduler, and it will then send it out, provided you've connected your social media to it, it will send it out for you at the date you need it to go. Lara with Libsyn obviously schedules her post. She may be uploading on a Monday, but they're going out on a Wednesday, so they're scheduled to be delivered to our, our doors, to our phones on specific times. Lightroom is another one. So if you are and have a business, so this might be, I don't know if Kathy, if you use this one, but um, okay, so Lightroom is about organizing and editing your photos and you can use in uh, different filters and sliders. And it's really good for Instagram posts. So if you're taking posts for, you know, if you're more visual as a business, like Kathy with Kitchens, it makes sense then to make sure, because you're competing against so many other people's photos, <laughs> you know, to get it as good as you can without it actually then having to cost you to go into a photography studio every time you have this new kitchen. Um, it enables you to do that and it enables you to do it on the fly so that you can get stuff out very quickly. And then Unfold is another tool that you can use if you are interested in creating stories for Instagram. Um, it's one that um, helps you just follow through, you follow the steps and immediately you've got your Instagram story up. And as we know, what's interesting is stories at the moment with both Instagram and with Facebook, um, have more viewings and you can get to see how many people have seen them. Posts are still under the domain of Facebook and Instagram. They get to decide who's going to see them. So, you know, at the moment, it's better to go for stories than it is to stay on posts. Um, but that could all change. So types of content and the, the golden, the golden goose egg question is does it actually convert and the big issue with social media is you have a camp of people that, that absolutely can see social media as the way to launch to generate massive following very quickly to purchase the product very quickly and that's fine if you've already got a large audience but if you're growing, if you're starting and you have a small one, it doesn't also mean that because they're small, they won't convert either. But you have to be kind of quite mindful of 
what content you're putting out and whether it's eventually leading to a sale. So actually talking about Cheryl's comment and question at the beginning was, you know, should you be putting up posts of your food and your dogs and your trip to the beach? If you're selling sandals, if you're a pet groomer or if you're a nutritionist, then yes, they're, they're perfectly legitimate because you would expect to see them as part of the brand. Um, if you are um, a, an influencer, if you are a coach, um, if you are a, what do they call them, like connectors, I've forgotten the, the term, then again, a, a sprinkling of those helps because it helps see your softer human side out, outside of your business. But the fundamental question is, is it actually converting to customers? And we're going to look at how that process happens in a little while. So the top five currently that do convert very well into paying customers are starting with the first top number one is quizzes. People like interactive content and more and more they're getting tired and jaded of the traditional presentation webinars because either they've had the experience where webinars have just turned into a massive advertorial and they haven't really got much value out of it and you're sitting there listening to this person telling you how amazing they are and where they were in Timbuktu and how they got this qualification, how they solved this problem. And that's all great, but you actually come away wishing you had that hour of your time back. So to, people have got become more savvy to that and they don't want to be sitting listening to adverts. They want to know how can this help them move forward in their business with their pain point, wherever they're at and why they're coming to you in the first place. So quizzes is, and Cheryl and I are looking at this at the moment in terms of how we construct and create um, and they're certainly a good way to engage, increase engagement and convert because people can't, you know, they, they just love doing quizzes. There's a psychological need to think, oh, I wonder who I am. I wonder which what archetype I am. Um, you know, even yesterday, knowing all this, and I saw this quiz and thought, oh, yeah, I'll just do it quickly <laughs> and find out what marketing it's what marketing archetype am I? And I'm apparently a trailblazer. I have no idea what that means yet because I haven't read the email that accompanies it to tell me what that means. But it was like, oh, I'm a trailblazer. That's really exciting. And then it's like, OK, so where's my next hit? So they are highly addictive and they do work. And it certainly has hooked me every single time. The next one is ebooks. Ebooks are still holding their own very comfortably. So if you have a book within you, if you have, whether that's a, a little ebook to explain what your next steps are on a journey or whether it's an experience that you've had and why you want to share it, absolutely ebooks are the right way to go. Strong positive content has been identified as number three. And this can be anything from inspiring quotes, reviews, testimonials, podcasts, images, stories, any of that, but it's anything that is evoking emotion in someone. And coming back to that earlier conversation where we were talking about should you put personal stuff on and where, there are some people out there, some business owners, some marketers who deliberately provocate, um, create combative um, stances, to get this very polarised view so that they can work out very quickly who's in their tribe and who isn't. It's a really good way when you can polarise them if they're either in the agree list and the, um, the disagree. And if they don't sit in the agree, then obviously they're not the people that you want. And over the last few years, I've started seeing um, a number of people who are more high profile starting to use that tactic to kind of cull some of the people that they no longer want to follow. And they usually are, are people that are moving into a transition phase of their brand or business. So they're diversifying slightly. So evoking emotion, whether it's, you know, absolutely connecting and reassuring and feeling that it totally resonates will engender them more towards your brand. Whereas if you say something controversial, if you do a lot of swearing, if, you know, these are all tactics as well that have been put to use to create those 
polarization so that people can decide whether or not they're in your in your gang or not visual complex uh, content so presenting something complex is also very highly scored so the infographics um, if you if you've got a complex so for example a flow chart of relationships you know you know, if you if you you're no longer talking to your partner, it would be a a, a, de a decent simple flow chart as to well, has your partner upset you? Yes or no? If yes, is that because he's done something or she's done something or they've done something that they shouldn't have done, or you know, is it because you're just feeling grotty? Yes or no? And before you know it, you're leading somebody through, and they'll come to an outcome which is yes you know there's something that you need to change within yourself that's an inner mechanism or no there were external factors here and therefore you know so again presenting complex material very simply works and is very effective for converting people and the last one which is interesting because you just thought it was the first one is actually the user generated content meaning this is content that you have created that is unique to you unique to your business unique to your experiences and you have then created content around that you've either put out a post or you've put out a recording or you've put out an image or you've created an inspirational quote, or you're, um, you know, you're showing, highlighting um, a success um, that you've had, that again will engage people and connect them. So audits and declutters, and this is where um, I absolutely need to continue. The, the question with this is, you know, what are you using these tools for? So I just want you to take a few minutes so that I'm not talking at you for a little bit longer, but just have a few minutes to jot down very quickly what are the top two um, things that you use in order to create documents. Okay. And then what are the top two for creating audio and podcasts if you do any audio and or podcasts? Again, which two top two for creating any video? And the top two for creating images. And we could go on and what do you use for your lives? You know, is there anything there? What top two um, things do you use, tools do you use for your lives? And I want you to just look at those, um, those responses. And I want you to think in, in two ways. The first is, is the tool very easy for you to use? Sort of okay or you had a massive, or you still have a massive learning curve around it. And then the next question to consider is bearing in mind that those tools have enabled you to either create or publish or analyze or something. Is it consistent with your brand? So for example, I'm gonna come off screen share just for a second. Hootsuite offer this um, ability to do an audit and we're going to do that. I'm just going to show you that in a minute or I will do when I've discovered what I've actually done with it. Uh -huh. Hang on a moment. Um, but the reason that I've asked you to just have a look and do that is to really consider whether the tools that you are using, are they creating time for you or, they or are they taking time away from you? Because really, if they're taking too much time away from you, then this is time that is being taken from you as a being, 
that might be nurturing time, relaxation time, self-care time, family time. Or it could be that it delays things in your business because it's not being effective and efficient for you. So Hootsuite came up with this um, template for actually auditing your um, social media. Let me just get that one to share. Now, when I looked at it, I thought, oh my word, you know, <laughs> that looks like it's going to take even more work than I've already got. But the more I started looking at it, and this is a freebie, and I'll send you the link and you can download it yourself for free um, once you click on the link. The more I started looking at it, the more I was thinking, actually, this is really, really helpful. So this is, um, although it's come from um, the social media examiner, I think, it's actually belonging to Hootsuite, which is one of the um, things I was talking to you, the schedulers and the, the creating your content organizers. Um, and what it basically starts off with is to really get a handle on what tools you're currently using that are then connected to usernames and passwords that are, you know, you have to go off and locate and how much time that's, that's taking you. So for example, do you have the same password and username for every single one of your social media apps? Because if you don't, that's going to lose you about 60 seconds. So one minute of your time is going to be spent just hunting down username and password. And add that up against how many social media tools you are using each week and then see how much time is lost just on looking for your usernames and passwords. Now, something like this will help you because you can just put everything in one place it's all interactive, you can click on it and it will take you straight to where you need to get to. But the nice thing about this, and it may be a little bit too much, you can always simplify it. But what I liked about this one is you can see whether or not you are connecting with your mission statement of your business so that it refocuses you to your mission statement, any key performance indicators that you have so that you're making your social media work for you and convert rather than it being a kind of activity that just is a nice or appears to be a nice thing to do to stay in contact. Now, Kathy, in many respects, has got this nailed because with her making use of Google AdWords, she already knows her bang for her buck. She already knows what she's looking for, and she's already looking to see whether it follows her KPIs that she set up. And this is good to do across all of your templates. You can then go in, if you really wanted to, and go into more detail for your specific social media uh, channels. So for me, at the moment, I'm just using Facebook and Pinterest. I took myself off LinkedIn, I took myself off Twitter, because weirdly, the customers or the clients I was looking for, for the LanaMorris.com, tend to be around Facebook. However, with that woman tech, I will need to get back onto LinkedIn, because that's where those clients will be. So this gives you the opportunity, I know it feels a bit long winded, but it gives you the opportunity to really focus down on the social media tools that are going to enable you to get to an end point of conversion. And each one you can go through and then see whether or not it works. And by doing the audit, it will also enable you to discover whether or not there are some social media tools that you are using that actually you don't need to because your customer is no longer there. So that's the first thing. And then the second aspect of that, I might have to just come off screen share and come back on, is, oops, let's just move that back 
chat. Okay. Is then the process of this. So in order for social media to work really effectively, it's looking at creating your social media strategy. So what are these overall goals? Are the targets that you're trying to achieve aligning with your business objectives? So for example, um, Lara's talked about your podcasting and that eventually it needs to get to a place where it's monetized in order for it to sustain itself. So your business objective might be that you're looking to increase your um, podcast reach by, say, 10 percent of where you're at now. It could be higher. But equally, it's to fulfill the business objective that you want to convert at least one percent of people coming in through that feed, coming in through that route. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then you've got um, in order to then know what your business objectives are, do your audit on your social media, work out your business goals, your marketing, and then really think about where does your customer avatar go to? Where do they go to that is going to be a place that they're receptive to both your message and your service? So we might naturally think, oh, well, I'll need to go over. So my natural response was I need to go over to LinkedIn and have a presence. But when I started looking at the customer journey last year or the year before with Cheryl through the Aspire and recognizing how people were coming in, actually a lot of the people coming in for anxiety and also the holistic therapies were coming in through Facebook. So in some respects, it justified my reason to come off LinkedIn because actually my clients weren't in LinkedIn. However, if I was moving the business to be more corporate and corporate well-being, I should be getting off Facebook because that's not where my clients will be. They will be on LinkedIn. So just recognizing the pattern of your customer avatar, where do they go to? For Kathy, you know, you'll have a very clear idea with your customers now when they come in through your funnel. You're also recognizing and probably got an eye out and who would be the other competitors that they would also be connecting with and going to so that you can recognize what keywords they're using so that you can also grab a piece of the pie. And I say that in a kind of slightly crude way, but you know, your competitors are also your, cust your potential customer pool because people will be going to them as well and looking at comparison between your services and theirs. After audit, after you've had the time and you've taken the time to do your media audit, it's then to move into how do we become consistent? And that's where we start looking at content calendars and a workflow for your content. And this is very much, as you know, enticing, maintaining relationships and moving them through the, the, the sales funnel. And then the final aspect of your social media strategy to get it into the doing of is also to look at resetting up your social media. So you've done your audit, you've looked at where your customer's going, you've looked at your business goals. So how do you now get to hear what your potential customer is saying and where are their pain points? So you can go and identify them and then say, yeah, I can fit that perfectly. And now I know how to respond to it. Or I don't know what my customer avatars are saying at the moment. I've got no idea. And so therefore, I need to go and find that information out. And there are key listening devices. There was one that, Kathy, I'm sure you showed us in the, um, not the AdWords. Yeah, it was the first Google ones that you were doing. And it's that lovely one. It's the weird guy staring at you. He looks at you, and I've forgotten the name of it. You, I, I will all probably just find it, and then I'll be, oh yeah, that's the one that she was on about. I will try and remember and find the name. But you can go there and you can find out in relation to your niche area, what are the current buzz things going on for customers? What are they talking about? So that you can then understand and know what, what direction your customer is going into. So the, the content calendar, very quickly, the problem, oh, there's so much choice out there now with calendars. You know, you've got Canva calendar, Hootsuite calendar, um, Buzzsprout calendar, Buzzsumo calendar. You've got every single, you've got Google calendar, you've got Outlook calendar. 
you've got iMac calendar, you've got your calendar on your phone, you've also got access to other calendars that you can download through Google Play Store. There are so many calendars. And the, the, the problem is we they're so good at marketing this stuff. Well, they are to me anyway, or maybe I'm just an easy pushover. But then there's all of a sudden all this shiny object syndrome. So I've got Asana, I've got um, HubSpot, I've got Trello, I've got this. I've got so many to make, make me organised. And as I mentioned at the beginning, all it's doing is actually taking more time away from me. So check your audit, check your strategy, check where your customer goes before you then think, what do I need? Do I just need a social media strategy and calendar or do I actually need a, a content management system with all my funnels and my social media and my conversions so that I can actually see everything? So that's one big thing to consider. And again, that will depend on your cost and your budget, whether or not you want to go down that route. However, there is a far simpler way. And that is, here's a calendar that you're familiar with. Don't worry if Hootsuite and Buzz have got colour coding and, you know, Google Calendar doesn't or Google Calendar's only got 11 colours on it and, you know, Microsoft Outlook don't have any just find the calendar that works best for you. And if push comes to shove, and this is gonna sound really heretic on a social media thing, just use a paper one. Because if your paper one actually gets you more consistency and it says on there, please post today, then you will do it. So pick something that you're really familiar with. If it is a, an app um, or it's uh, some kind of, um, you know, on a platform, get familiar with it. You know, you, you do need to be prepared to spend a little bit of time on the learning process. So just like Canva, although it's highly intuitive, there are some elements that you have to go, sort of go off and learn and find out a little bit more about. So get to know it because when you get to know it well, that's when it starts paying dividends for you. Check that it connects and that it can be used to connect to your mobile phone and sync. There have been some, um, you know, social media tools where they're great on desktop, but they're not very mobile responsive. WordPress, one of the other reasons I love WordPress is because actually you can download the app onto your phone. You can do your blog posts off your phone. And if I'm in a hurry, I've been able to do that. So that's another thing to think about is how um, how um, integrated can it be with your other devices? And, you know, just go with what feels most comfortable, because if it's most comfortable and familiar to you, you're more likely to do it than try and try out all these new different things and then um, and then try and adopt them. You know, my latest uh, addiction was looking at Google, uh, Microsoft Teams, and it was wonderful for the first three days. And then I moved to OneNote and that was great because I could make notes on and, and electronic notes. And it's just not I couldn't sustain it because it's not my natural way of being. My natural way of being is in the Microsoft Outlook calendar and make sure it's followed up by having it on a on a paper calendar as well. And that's that's the way I am. So if you want increased reach schedule and it's this the whole thing about batching I'm going to talk about in a minute. If you want increased engagement, reply, you know, look out for people's comments and reply to them. Don't just leave them hanging, you know, always respond because that's where your engagement reach will go up. And for the algorithms around Facebook, um, you know, that's the more people engage with you then the more, you know, popularity your post gets and the more visibility it gets because Facebook are throttling quite a lot. Um, I was listening to Anik Singal yesterday's podcast, um, yesterday's video, and he was saying that he has over 100,000 people on his Facebook um, page. And of that, only 6,000 actually see any posts he puts up. And that is down to Facebook saying, we'll give you this little bit, but if you pay us more money, we'll give you more. And so they're a pay for, you know, pay to play 
um, they've moved into a pay to play platform. Try saying that when you've had a couple of glasses of wine. Um, integrated experience, share things. Now you guys got really good at doing this on LinkedIn when you wrote posts and then as a group, you started you know, commenting and then sharing it off to other places on your LinkedIn. And this is a really good way to start integrating the experience. So I would strongly say, keep doing it because it, it, does, it does work. It's a slow burn, but it does work. Increasing your organic reach. Again, the more you can put up about in, you know, quotes that inspire you, like your, your post this evening, Cheryl, um, on your journal, you know, just reminding people that, you know, the, that how that, um, you know, how you can make use of that, how that will help you with law of attraction, how that will help you with manifesting was a really great example of being able to refresh something that's already been to recycle and re remind people of because you'll pick up new people Pe not everybody's going to be watching that post at that, that particular time so the more you can kind of recycle and put a different slant on it the more that you're reconditioning stuff that you've already put out so it's back to that issue around content you don't have to keep producing new every single time just look at what you've already got and you're, you've got to sort of have this hard head on at some point to say, OK, if I'm investing time doing this, am I getting people to the point where they're going to buy my stuff and buy my service? And if they're not on that platform, just get rid of it because it will free you up to be. than trying to be all things to all people on every single platform so pick the ones that your customer avatar go to that you feel you can engage with and that you can enable a discussion dialogue to happen in those forum environments and again the more it's also offline so the more that they experience their aftercare with you the more that they you put up testimonials the more you're creating that virtuous cycle so that you can start building up. One example, and um, this is one weirdly that I started using about two and a half years ago. I used it for about six weeks. I got everything set up, used it for six weeks, and then I left it for about five months. But weirdly, it's one I keep coming back to because it's the one area that I can use it and create what I need to create in the way that I want to. But it also has templates if I get stuff and I want different templates. So if I if I show you, I don't know if you can see that very well. So this is the example of my Trello. And what you can see, apart from on the far left, you can see my website colors because I can never remember the darn hex codes. But you can see I've got my to do's for my social media calendar. So as you can see, it's on my to do at the moment is to amend it because it needs sorting. Then you can see these are the social media channels that are connected to LanaMorris.com and how I'm putting information out. So then I've got the email lists that are connected to the social media channels so that people can then get on my list, which becomes my asset, which becomes my control, which is exactly what Karen was talking to us about um, the, other, the other week. Um, and somebody else was talking around, you know, having that. Then you can actually see my email sequence. So where, um, so I'm, I usually do in batches of three. I've started my, changed my structure now that my power hour has to include creating three emails so that I'm starting to bulk up and build up um, my emails so that I'm not leaving them last minute and that everything is going out weekly. But where the pinks are, the pinks are where I'm actually creating it and made an offer to that list. And the purple is an event upcoming that they might be interested in connecting with. Those of you that are on the Inner Calm Club list will probably, certainly, I'm very grateful that one person who's in this group that shall remain nameless commented how much they laughed at the fight in my face and I'll kill you blog post, which is always so encouraging because it's actually so nice to hear, yay, somebody read it, it's really cool. And obviously you can go back and look at your stats in, um, in your mail anyway. 
But then you, so for me, Trello works beautifully because I can, I can create the headings. Um, I can create what I need to remember. So on the far right, you can see these are policies that I need to start updating again now and just do a check. But what it enables me to do is it takes the panic now out of my head because no longer am I thinking, oh my goodness, um, I haven't done X, Y, and Z. It means that I'm able to batch and schedule how I do it rather than Hootsuite reminding me to do it or Buffer telling me I haven't put enough to post out this week because that all adds to the stress of the experience. So if you're going to look at creating a schedule, I would say the two simplest routes would be Trello so that you get everything up there so that you can really understand and list through what you need. And the second thing is your Google Calendar. If you use Google Calendar or the calendar that you are most familiar with and keep returning to. That way, it just takes all the stress and pressure off. It keeps it nice and simple. And it means that you can then actually start thinking about enjoying what you put in your social media rather than rushing to think I've got to get something out. So Brian Solis, social media is actually about psychology and psychology more than technology. And I will end on, if you need any help, you can come to the headquarters. It sounds so posh, doesn't it? At Upmore Vale in Bridge End, or you can call me or you can email me at thatwomantech at gmail.com. Ah, so I look forward to your responses and your comments. Lovely. Thank you, Lana. That was amazing. Oh, let's get some feedback. So, Lara, how are you going to put this learning into action in your business? Well, thank you, Lana. Learning from you yet again. And I had no idea that in Canva you could then schedule posts. No idea whatsoever. <sighs> okay. I like the fact that you're giving us permission to go back to paper. I do like paper. However, Irene had showed me Trello and, you know, I very much resonated with get it out of your head onto there. And I, I'm going to, you can hold me to account, ladies. I am going, I'm writing it down. I am going to try Trello this week, ready for next week. Okay. I'm going to do that with, with lists. I think that's really good. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. I need to process because okay. I've, come a, I've come a long, long way. You know, that, that thing that you said about write down where you do your Word documents, what down for, you, you know, those, you know, a lot of them have all got okay. But the only one that hasn't got okay on is I'd say I'm better than okay on Zoom. And I sort of know how to use my iPad for the videos and the, cam and the camera. But everything else is just okay, which in my words means could learn more. But I totally agree with you. And this is why I avoid, another reason why I avoided social media is because the time that it took me to generate and spend on it was just dominating at the detriment of other other stuff to get on with and that is still my um thing that i need to take care of um so yeah but yeah thanks very much thank you Lovely. thank you and over to you kathy what are you going to put into action well i was quite interested in that trello stuff but it still looks very complicated uh what what really took my attention was those other uh uh, platforms for publishing so I haven't heard of those um, so because I've got quite a lot of content now so I'm gonna have a look at those and see if uh, yeah see what they're all about and see if I can monetize them lovely I've got some learning points here I love the list of things it's almost like that we need to have in our shopping basket like we've got to have a quiz we've got to have ebooks having this strong positive content and visual content and user generated content it's almost like okay i know i've got it somewhere but am i actually putting it into a file that's easily accessible and i suppose the surprise for me when you said to think about what you use it was recognizing for me um 
primarily I, I only use my phone and Canva, my phone, Canva and Word. And knowing how important it is as an entrepreneur to uh, have developed the ability of ongoing knowledge skill transfer, because I know, you know, I bought my uh, updated my iPhone because it has great recording, great photography, but am I using it to its capability? So it is about, you know, keeping yourself up to date, even though you might only be using three or four things. Do you know enough about them? So that was my uh, learning this evening. But, oh, gosh, I've learned so much. So could we thank uh, Lana and put our hands together for her? Well done, Lana. And I'm going to uh, stop the record, if that's OK, with everyone. And just thank Lana for just amazing insights into how we're going to organise our social media.